printed parts popping, layers losing lines, and filament flinging fragments. All this and more. Print Fix Friday, episode 168. Let's get into it. Starting off with a fail from our Patreon Discord, Spectre V3i here has got a Prusa Mark III S. Uh, looks at least some tasteful modifications done to it in some color, and it is also enclosed. We've got some 3DX Tech ASA here, and as we can see, we've got some splitting. It's that time of year, and that means it gets tougher and tougher and tougher to print styrene and other high temperature plastics because you require chamber temperatures to be much higher than 41 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, there is no real way to fix this uh, other than making sure that your chamber temperature is higher. You could certainly try to warm up the part, try to bend it back if you notice it quickly. But at this level, the best thing you can functionally do is to fill the part, sand it, and then paint it. And at that point, you might as well just reprint it. Unfortunately, this is one of those problems that styrene, that's your ABS and your ASA, plastics tend to have. Uh, nylon as well as polycarbonates can also exhibit this issue. But as they cool, the parts shrink a little bit. And that shrinkage, if it is not well controlled, can create high stress points inside of your parts. And where you have stress risers, like right where the part gets a little bit thinner before it starts to get thicker again, you can certainly see it pull apart at times. Ways to combat this include just making sure your temperature is hotter, making sure you're printing parts that don't need as much support material that can print faster, or adding a heater to your chamber. Now we've talked about this before as we went through the entire saga of Chidi and their chamber heaters, which we'll card to if you wanna take a look. We found that you really don't need chamber heaters. What you need is a fan blowing on your heat bed before you start your print. At least 20 minutes before you go to actually run the print, heat up the print bed. You could make a G-code file of this, Put a small fan inside of your actual enclosure that blows on the heat bed. That will help move some of that hot air off of the heat bed around the chamber. It works so well that like our Bamboo X1 Carbon can easily hit 50C, but that is also in the swampiness that is Florida. Somebody. So grain of salt that obviously. Unfortunately, there's no way to fix this part and you're just gonna have to reprint it or potentially just live with the issue. If you guys have any tips for printing when it gets cold, let me know in those comments because there are some janky ways to do it. There are some good ways to do it. You can figure them out if you would like, but the right way I would think if you want to insulate it is to use proper insulative materials that are going to be fire retardant. Anyways, my name's Grant. This is Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your 3D printers back to printing with purpose. And if you've got a particular problem, you can reach out to us on all the social medias, although I mostly monitor Twitter, YouTube, and Blue Sky these days, and we'll help you get your printers running again. Whether it is a simple problem or a complicated issue, we don't like to see printers being down. So if you are either new, potentially going to be new to this industry, or you're a seasoned veteran that has got that one problem that's just making you say, huh, we're here to help. And really, the only thing that I'll ever ask is that you leave a like and get subscribed because, hey, free help. Can't beat that. I guess you technically can, but I'm not going to pay you to help. We got a part that I misdiagnosed a couple of weeks ago. Not this particular piece, but the actual thing. This is a flow rate calibration from Orca. I thought it was the pressure advanced calibration print from Orca a couple of weeks back, so... Sorry, thanks to all of you that did point it out that I'm a ding dong and don't always know exactly what I'm looking at, so I appreciate that heavily. We've got someone asking what the heck is causing these diagonal gaps. They've been trying to recalibrate their Ender 3 Pro since these diagonal gaps started to appear. Here's pass to an Orca Slicer's flow rate calibration directly after tightening gantry screws, which did nothing to help. We've got actually a pretty clear photo, so thanks for that, of what appears to be an extruder not properly extruding. And to some extent, it is a repeating 
pattern where we see it occurring pretty heavily twice but this machine overall is just under extruding my best course of action here is going to be to check that extruder this one though looks like we're either having skipping occurring from the actual extruder itself the bowden tube could be damaged if you're not running an all metal hot end or we've got some crap built up on the gears and we can see that they're running a 15 to 50 millimeter print speed and a 60 millimeter per second retraction 60 millimeters per second is a little fast but eh it could be worse. They are running Overture PLA, and the issue happens with PLA and PETG filaments. I'm also going to guess that just based on the photo itself, you're running a little cold. The Ender 3 extruder is not known for its high quality components, and we can see that someone pointed out something that I would have said that the Ender 3 Pro comes stock with a crappy plastic extruder that flexes and skips bad. But the individual upgraded that extruder for a metal one, but they still think it might be it. And I would agree. Even those dual gear drive extruders can still have pretty serious issues when you're just dealing with filament that doesn't want to be pushed. So if you're not running an all metal hot end, check the Bowden tube. That's the first thing that I would even bother doing because the Bowden tube on any printer for that matter, but especially Bowden printers with non all metal hot ends. That is a massive wear item and something that you need to replace regularly. But beyond that, I want you to also check to make sure the gears are clean as well. If the gears themselves aren't clean and there's just some plastic crap inside of those hobbed gears, they're gonna have a hard time gripping the filament. I do find that those metal extruders often have springs on them that are way too strong and can cause the filament to strip out faster than you might expect. If you're not actively cleaning those extruder wheels over time, they're going to build up extra crap that can not only damage your filament and potentially contaminate, you know, a pure material, but it could also just build up and create a failure mode that is simply from it not having any grip but it could also just be that your temperatures aren't high enough i prefer to see my pla to be a little bit shinier than what we're seeing and that's what's leading me to believe that potentially potentially we've got an issue with too low of temperature and for whatever it might be worth i do think we're over extruding on these first couple of layers if we're trying to dial in our flow rate and we're seeing reduced flow rate because our temperature is too low and our extruder is potentially skipping yeah you might be just pumping up the flow rate trying to solve the problem there is a methodical way to handle these issues we're not entirely certain which one of them is right but they're all good things to check and that's part of dealing with any 3D printer fault. There's normally a set way to handle it. They might not all be valuable, but it's never a bad thing to trust, but verify. Moving on with another fail from our Patreon Discord server, which if you would like to join is at the $10 tier and higher, linked below. We have an awesome group of people who like to talk about 3D printing, among many other things, and you'll get to see sneak peeks of what's coming up, including this. Last year at Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rep Festival, we shaved my head and raised over $6,000 for charity. We got some interesting logos, but this year we're doing something a little bit more sweet. Yes, this is a can of Rep Brim. That's quite good. We have camera lady Amber here who's going to show you how we're going to raise money this year. I think she enjoys that a little bit too much. We're gonna raise money by, well, pieing me in the face, but it's a game of chance as well. Stay tuned to find out more. It's gonna get a little bit messy because she was nice. You don't really have to be. You can have as much fun as you want, but you gotta get lucky. If you hit a D20 or a D6 on the right number, you're gonna get a nice plate like this and you're gonna make me look a little bit crazy. Every single penny of the money that we raise goes directly to Sanjay Mortimer Foundation to help neurodiverse makers like myself and like many of you out there. So, oh, I hate to say this, but get out your wallets because it's gonna get messy for me at your all's expense. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll see you at Smurf. And don't worry, if you're not there, you can still win. More information coming soon. So, you know, if you 
do want to join. $10 tier or higher. But hey, if you want to kick us a couple of bucks, that'd be greatly appreciated. We got my man Zerno here who has a Bamboo Lab A1 or A1 Mini. I honestly can't tell. But he's got his little purge block here and I can see a bunch of poop. Zerno, don't poop on the table. That's bad for you. And unless it's Deborah's desk, I'm not a huge fan of pooping on tables. Oh, on Deborah's desk! We can see here that the actual purge tower and the support material have collided. And thankfully, it's just the first layer, so it's not that big of a deal. But it should have been something that told you in the slicer that this was going to happen. I would say, though, that at the end of the day, this is kind of a win because now you know at least that area of the support is not going to fall off. It's not that big of a deal. Obviously, if it was closer and hitting more of the support material in that purge block as well, that would be a significant problem versus this, but it is something good to keep in mind that your purge blocks are not contacting your actual printed parts unless you are 100% meaning to do that. There are certainly cases where your supports won't be all that steady because you just don't have a lot of space for them to exist in so you're opting to also connect them to some sort of a purge block or prime block to make sure that they don't fall over there are times where that can be a huge benefit i know this time it was not the intention so how to deal with it just verify that your purge tower is not going to hit anything the slicer should show you all of this and if i'm correct it should warn you as well so thankfully this is task failed successfully Good job, I think. Last but not least, one coming all the way from overseas. Patreon member and good friend of the channel, Jimmy, who uh, got a five kilo roll of filament, decided that he didn't want to run the whole 5kg and wanted to re-spool it. Left for a bit of a trip, came back to... Well, disaster. This, it to me, is al dente spaghetti. This is what happens when the filament has too much stress after it's been re-spooled. And it's why we recommend if you're going to re-spool filament, regardless if it's from a bigger roll to a smaller roll or one kilo to another kilo because you want to use a different spool for some reason, that you do go ahead and put that filament into a dryer. Now that's not because it's wet filament because traditionally it's not wet filament unless it is. Yes, it's basically like Dr. House and Lupus. You stash your drugs in a Lupus textbook. It's never Lupus. This case, it's not wet filament. It, this would be indicative of wet filament, but not in this grandiose way. This is indicative of internal stressing of the filament, deciding that it no longer wants to be a part of this world and just just cracking it into pieces. A dryer will help soften the filament, allow that stress to just calm down, and it just relaxes it ever so slightly, and it should keep it from having this issue. Past Jimmy didn't know this, but present Jimmy does, so future Jimmy shouldn't ever have issues that past Jimmy had. It's a bummer, don't get me wrong, and certainly if you're buying a five kilo roll to save money, now a lot of that money savings is gone because not only do you have a huge mess, but you have a ruin spool that is all effectively trash. I think it is best on this one to just throw in the towel as it were and say, well, I guess I won't do that again. It's okay to buy big spools of filament. There's nothing wrong with it but make sure that you're going to warm up the filament at least a little bit because as you go from a really big spool to a really small spool, those stresses can get pretty serious. And well, this is what happens when they decide that enough's enough and they pop. Speaking of popping off, I want to pop off and say a huge thank you to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do making videos like this possible and the upcoming trip that we have to the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Fest where... As you saw, it's gonna get a little messy. This time we don't have a sponsor, so works fully self-funding this trip. While it was awesome to have a sponsor last year, it didn't happen this year. So this one is being funded by all of our members. So thank you all for making these kind of trips possible where we're gonna show you some really awesome stuff this year and we have some awesome content already planned out that's all we have for you all today if you made it this far in this video you'll like the one below me and go check out maker fair orlando 2024 i thought it was a pretty decent video but i'd love to know your thoughts either way stay safe out there don't forget to call your loved ones and as always keep making awesome have a good one hey free help can't beat that
Although I guess you technically can, but I'm not gonna pay you guys to help you. Although I guess I technically do. This is getting more complicated than it should be.